Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Bard Actor Channel and our 100th episode. Now, I was going to try to do something very big for this episode. I was going to be weird and try to recreate the welcome to the middle of the film scene, including a hand coming from a vase holding flowers and our own little version of Find the Fish. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch The Meaning of Life. Then you'll know. But then something interesting happened. Ira Glass lobbed some pretty incendiary slow balls across the plate in the form of a couple of tweets. Now, some of you probably already know what I'm talking about. Some of you were going, well, what did he tweet? But most likely, most of you are going, who the hell is Ira Glass? Well, YouTubers, Ira Glass is the host of the radio show, This American Life. It's a very interesting and thought-provoking show which takes a general theme for every episode and then thoroughly explores it through stories, commentaries, essays, interviews. It's formatted in a prologue followed by a couple of acts, a lot like Shakespeare. It's a very popular radio show as well as an even more popular podcast. Well, that answers the first question. Now, what the hell did he tweet? Well. Let's go to the big board, shall we? It seems that at 12.12 a.m. on July 28th, Ira Glass tweeted the following. John Lithgow as Lear tonight. Amazing. Shakespeare. Not so much. No stakes. Not relatable. I think I'm realizing Shakespeare sucks. And then three minutes later, he tweets the following. Same thing with the great Mark Rylance shows this year. Fantastic acting, surprisingly funny, but Shakespeare is not relatable, unemotional. And then a follower tweets him sometime a little on and says, with all due respect, Ira Glass, what the hell are you talking about? And at 12.51 a.m., Ira Glass tweets the response that maybe Shakespeare sucks. Now, you may or may not know already, but... I love Shakespeare. I mean, if you haven't figured it out yet by seeing my Shakespeare section on the channel or noticing the name of my channel itself, I think Shakespeare is really freaking awesome. So I might be a little biased in my response to Ira Glass. Now, I could be incredibly reactionary and attack the man himself, say something along the lines of, this American life, amazing. Ira Glass's voice, not so much. Not relatable, not emotional, too monotone. Reminds me of my sixth period physics teacher that used to make me fall asleep by the droning of his voice. You know, I think I'm realizing that Ira Glass sucks. But I won't do that. Instead, I'm going to posit an interesting theory here. Go out on a limb and suggest that maybe Mr. Glass did not like Mr. Lithgow's or Mr. Rylance's productions as much as he thought he would. But instead of trying to find constructive criticism about said productions, he instead decided to act like a high school sophomore and just go, you know what, Shakespeare sucks anyway, so must be that. To me, comments like that are the equivalent of saying something like, saw LeBron James play tonight, amazing. Basketball? Not so much. Look, I get it. Shakespeare's not everybody's cup of tea or two liter bottle of their favorite soft drink. I, I can relate. I don't get Fox News, but there are a couple things that you might want to consider on the unrelatable and unemotional front. One, his plays have been around for 400 years and are more performed than any other playwright, but not because that there's a law that says we have to do so, so there must be some other reason, right? Like, I, I don't know, because they relate to the human condition? Two. Here's an interesting little fact. Do you know that we still quote Shakespeare in our everyday language and we don't even know it? Seen better days? We use that one all the time. That's a great example. Guess what? It comes from Timon of friggin' Athens. Three, his plays are relatable in many, many ways. Social, political, economic, racial, religious, familial relations. It's all there. And sadly, not much has changed in 400 years. Some characters act very nobly. Others take dark choices. Most of them do, actually. And sadly, that hasn't changed in 400 years either. And if that doesn't convince you, four. Let's talk about Shakespeare's influence on our everyday modern TV and movie entertainment. Shakespeare's characters talk to the audience. Sure, 
but so does Ferris Bueller and Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Frank Underwood and House of Cards, Zach Morris and Saved by the Bell, and everyone on Modern Family. Breaking Bad? That's Macbeth spread over five seasons as we watch a good man succumb to ambition and desire of power until he turns into a monster. Frank Underwood from House of Cards? He's Richard III and Iago from Othello wrapped into one. Game of Thrones? Is the history cycle recycled? How I Met Your Mother has tapped Comedy of Errors, As You Like It, Much Ado About Nothing, Twelfth Night, etc., etc., etc. And hell, Dallas even had a season cliffhanger ending with, It was all a dream. Is all of Shakespeare great? Hell no. But the stuff that is... Man, it's frickin' amazing. Mr. Glass, I know that you have backed the bus up a little bit and that you've basically stated that your tweets were kind of an off-the-cuff thing to say, that in the light of day you realize that you can't defend it all. So I give you that. But please, forgive me when I off-the-cuff say that your tweets can suck my Shakespearean balls. <laughs> off that soapbox. And now for something completely different for our 100th episode, a compilation of Grant's tomb acting like an ass at the start of our recording sessions. Enjoy. And thanks, thanks, and ever thanks for watching. Take care. <laughs> Bang, 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 bang. He plays, he plays, he plays, he moves, he moves. Oh God. Well, I'm hung like a horse, am I right? I th <laughs> now you're being recorded. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's get preference. <laughs> oh, the audio settings are weird. Am I being pouty? You're being pouty. I'm Look being... at yourself on it. You're being uber pouty right now. No. <laughs> I'm pensive. Oh, is that what it is? It's different. It's different. Now, there you go. There you go. Now you're being pouty. Oh my god. Yeah. And we're on. Okay, so now we're going back. Alright, that was Fight the Virus. Obi-Wan's Destiny. 